The Kagura Project is the world's best and only truly mixed media story. Rather than just linearly presenting a bunch of plot elements and retelling them A to B every time through every medium, it's more like every single part of it tells its own unique part of the story. Does that sound like it's probably terribly confusing? Well, it's because it is. But what if I told you that in spite of all of that confusion, that Jin actually a genius? Using different mediums of storytelling lets you play to the strengths inherent in each and convey things about the characters and plot in ways that were previously impossible. To illustrate this, let's look at the character of Takana Animoto and see how her appearances in music, manga, first-person narrative, and anime each offer different and particular characterization. Looking at the music first, as we always do, Takane has four songs in which she is the focal point, while appearing in a whopping 16 of them total. Looking just at headphone actor, Ennis Saber Journey, UK Yesterday, and Jinzo Enemy, you can already get a strong feel for the kind of person that Takane is. That lies in the greatest strength inherent to the medium of music, the emotion. While perhaps not the best at conveying literal plot details or character exposition, music is exceptionally well versed at painting a detailed picture of a character emotionally. Any cyber journey is frantic and self-deprecating, all up until its last course, where that same energy is turned around into hope. UK Yesterday is a bouncy and energetic song, in spite of talking his glum demeanor and the panic in the final few seconds of the composition. Headphone actor is full of despair amongst a fleeting hope, while Jinzo enemy is understanding turned to resentment. What we see in this is a duality of personhood. The gloomy Takane has girly feelings that she's too embarrassed to make known. Her disability leaves her lethargic, but she longs to be free and spirited. She wants to help, but doesn't know how. The composition lets you know that Takane is a character all about the inner struggle, a struggle to be and do what she wants in spite of herself. And while perhaps not explicitly detailing many specifics of how and why, having that understanding is vital to getting a full understanding of the other mediums. When looking at manga as a medium of entertainment, its strengths lie in manga's ability to balance the heavy power of monologue inherent in normal literature with the graphic directing of animation. Anime usually has less monologue than manga, but also has audio and motion, while manga gains back that powerful descriptor while also being able to present powerful moments with a level of detail and clarity that anime could never reach. Take these pages here, which are part of the manga's visualization of the song Headphone Actor. Removing the text, you can see how Mahiro Sato's beautiful illustrations convey that duality from earlier. Not through word or tone, but through expression. Takane shakes and cries, but at the end gets up and runs. It's clear that she isn't running away, either, but rather she's running with determination to some further goal. Sato's eyes are the kicker here, perfectly showing terror and resolution at once. But of course, manga isn't the illustrations alone. The script itself details the duality of hope and despair, presented through the literal dialogue Takane is having with herself. Also note how the panel saying, I am alone, is isolated, giving it more weight and importance. What Takane fears the most isn't the end of the world, it's that she is alone. Cut off from both the world she rejects and the three friends that she doesn't. Takane's scared. She wants to keep living, but living is hard, so she just gives up. She cuts herself off and indulges. But she does want to live. She does want to help and be with others. She just needs to find the courage to do so. It only makes sense that Takane's most climactic moment in the entire series happens at the end of the manga then when for the first time she gains the courage to face Shintaro with her real feelings, and the two exchange a heart-to-heart -heart confession that both of them wanted, but neither of them knew how to do until then. Sato's illustrations jump off the page. Gratitude and joy. But while Mang is able to create powerful moments through poignant illustration, there's absolutely no better way to get inside of a character's head than through good old-fashioned first-person literature. So, uh, I'm gonna read just a little bit from the eighth novel here, and uh, it's a little long, but I don't think there's any better way to sum up Takane and her arc than this right here. If anyone ever asks me what I think about this journey, I'll probably say none of us knew a thing about it. I think I heard someone say something similar about it once, but I won't let that bother me. It's not like anyone's going to ask me anyway. Calling it a journey might be exaggerating things a little, but it seems like the perfect word to me. I lost my body, I lost my friend, and then I woke up in a world where I only exist as a consciousness. I've spent two years like this, flying around this virtual world as if fleeing from something. I wound up over on his computer to hide from it all. And yet, here I am now, to face it all down. Looking back, I think my life's been pretty awful from start to finish. But all these things that have happened to me, and the pain they brought, made me feel like I was still alive, whether I had my body or not. I don't mean to sound like I'm thankful for it, but I'm pretty sure that I don't hate my life or anything. It's been an adventure, one I was completely unprepared for. Nothing ever went right. I was scared, I stumbled around, but I still managed to fly all the way here. Once this battle is over, maybe I should write it all down on my favorite web form. Then, when people start commenting about how made up it sounds, we all can gather around the screen and laugh at it. 
I fly on, soundlessly, through a world the color of green rust. All I can tell, and I don't know how I know this, but I do, is that there's no turning back from where I am. I recall the events that led me here, the situations I'll never return to again. The first time I fell in love and found myself unable to express my feelings. The time I realized someone I hated was actually a pretty cool guy. The moment I realized that I was almost astonishingly incapable of doing anything. That and the fact that someone like me still had people who called her their friend. I'll likely wind up losing someone again. But up ahead here, I'm bound to obtain something else. No. I have absolutely no regrets in this awful, yet wonderful life. No matter what kind of ending is waiting for me. While music lets you feel, and manga and anime let you experience, text, literature, more than anything else, let you think like a character does. And it's only when you have all of these pieces that you can fully understand the character of Takane Animoto, Shinjiro Kisaragi, or anyone else. Beyond the different plot points, there's a rich depth in seeing what different mediums have to offer. And that's what makes the Kagura Project so special. That's why I still love it even today.